I know we just shouldn't care what gear other photographers use, you know, what lenses and which camera system and which bags and straps for Christ's sake, but we're photographers. We can't help it. My name is Gary Williams. I call myself a wedding photographer, but I think really my passion is just portraiture, you know, whether that is at a wedding or in the studio or on the street or in people's homes. I love meeting new people. I love trying to figure out what makes them tick and capturing that in a single image. Now, if you're curious to know how I took these kind of pictures, let's talk about gear a little bit. I'm going to make a few videos actually all about the gear that I use, but today I'm going to talk specifically about lenses. So first off, I am a Fuji shooter. I can't say that I you know, consciously researched all of the other options. I just went with a mate of mine to the Fuji shop. <laughs> I like the look of the X-T3s as it was then, and uh, I went for it. We both did. We've got exactly the same cameras. That was in early 2022, and now I've got a couple of X-T5s. I still actually use that original X-T3 with the, I think it's a 16 to 80 kit lens for my video work. I'm using it right now. I love it. It's got a very smooth, quiet, reliable autofocus. Uh, the quality is great as you can see. Uh, and for a while, I was actually shooting weddings with one X-T5 and the X-T3, which was fine, but I do tend to crop quite a lot, and I was sort of missing those extra megapixels, so I upgraded to two X-T5s and the newer lenses. Now, I'm very relieved to say that I finally settled on a small selection of lenses. I mean, I said that, but looking at them now, it's really not that quite small. In fact, I'm kind of appalled at how many lenses I've got because I, I'll explain. I mean, some some of them I use all the time. Some of them are, are literally gathering uh, dust. But it's a relief to me because, and I know I'm not the only photographer to do this. You know what I used to do when I first started? I'd watched every YouTube video I could find, and the photographer would be saying, you know, that they they love this lens. It was the newest, best lens they'd be showing the images that they're taken with that lens. And I just thought to myself, well, I want to take pictures like that. Those pictures are amazing. If only I had that lens, that would solve everything. So I'd go out and, you know, buy the lens. And of course, I realised pretty soon it wasn't actually my old lens that was a problem. It was my crappy technique and I just didn't know what I was doing with the cameras. <laughs> it took me a long time and quite a lot of money to learn that. But a few months later, I'd forgotten all about that and then I ended up watching another YouTube video and buying another lens that I thought was going to solve all of my problems. And I actually had a bit of a mad two years just buying stuff, just buying loads of, not crap, but just unnecessary stuff. I didn't need it. And the good news is I'm actually also very good at eBaying stuff. So since most of the lenses that I bought were used, I actually didn't lose too much money when I ended up, when I ended up selling them again. So what have I got now? Well, as you can see, there is a little array here. Some of these lenses are more important to me than the others, so let's go through them. I started out with the 23 here and the 56 mm uh, which is here on this X-T5, which on full-frame sensors equates to about 35 and 85, that sort of classic combo. I did mess around with the 16 mm uh, for a, a while. I found it a little bit wide for me at the time. And then on the advice by the great Kevin Mullins, I settled on the 18 mil. So when I shoot weddings these days, I have the 18 mil and the 56 mil on my two bodies, and they are on there most of the time. If it's an intimate wedding in a small registry office, uh, or I, I just haven't got a lot of space outside to do group shots, I'm going to switch the 56 for the 33 here. And I'm going to shoot each group shot wide first with the 18 and then a little bit tighter uh, with the 33 just to get that little less depth of field and a bit more of a blurry background, right? So that the, the group shots pop a bit. This is quite fun. I'm going to show you a picture now. This is from one of the first weddings that I shot. This is um, Amy and Richard. So I had on my camera at that point the 23 and, and then the, uh, my lens I was using the 23 and the 56. When I came out to do the groups, I had the 56 and I just, I wanted to take the pictures with the 56. And I, I think actually, for some reason, I was only carrying one body at the time when it was the 56 and I didn't want to go back to my bag. I felt a bit sort of stuck, but I just wasn't used to using this camera. I wasn't used really to this focal. I wasn't used to doing anything. 
And so I found myself having to go really far. We're just on the confetti. Everybody's kind of standing around waiting. I'm doing these small group shots. And I was going so far back. And I was having to say to people, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, as I walked further and further, further back. And I remember like thinking, this is ridiculous. Now, I love the way this picture looks. I love the way that the, that the group pops. But really, if I was in that situation now where space is a little bit limited outside, I would switch to the 33. I'd have that on my other body and it would just make it life a little bit easier. It's still a great lens, 50 mil equivalent. So now, I suppose we should talk a little bit about uh, zooms versus primes, because, you know, you could say that just having a, a zoom would have solved that problem that I was talking about in an instant. And you might be right, but <laughs> of course, it's not quite that simple. I think it's fair to say that there's this thing with some wedding photographers, prime shooters, of course, that if you shoot primes, you're just a better photographer than if you shoot with zooms. And of course, that is just absolute bollocks. All of this stuff, all of this stuff that we use, it's just tools, right? I mean, it's, we just use whatever tools we need to help us get the job done as we see fit, right? It doesn't matter if it's a zoom or a prime, you just use what works best for you. That said, I mostly use primes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but there are sometimes, especially in a busy reception, if I'm using a flash, as I often do, I prefer to use a zoom. So this is, you know, this is what works for you. So I use this 16 to 55, it's 2.8, it's very heavy. And that's one of the reasons why I don't, I mean, it's, it weighs a ton. And it's one of the reasons that I don't like to use it. It's not my preference to use this because it's so heavy and you're walking around for what, you know, perhaps eight, 10 hours a day. I really don't want this. And I certainly don't want this thing on my camera. So I use this when I need to. And if I'm using flash and I feel the need to use flash, um, I don't want to be switching the flash from one body to another. And I find in those, if it's at a, a corporate event or if it's a drinks reception at a wedding, you know, people are sort of seeing you as the camera. Oh, do you mind taking our picture? Can you take our picture? I know some photographers hate that and they just say no or they give some excuse why they won't do that. I never understood that. I'm there. I'm the photographer. I've got the equipment. It's my pleasure to take their picture. But sometimes, of course, I could say to them, look, the environment's terrible. Can we go over there or can we go outside? Can I move you? And I do do that sometimes. But most of the time for those kind of shots, it's just like take the thing and move on. And you know, one thing that I really like about using primes is the consistency. I know these lenses well, particularly the 18 and the 56. I know what's going to happen when I put it to my eye. I know what it's going to look like. And unless I'm doing something really arty, the 18 mil is pretty much as wide as I need to go. And the 56 is pretty much as tight as I need to go. Now beyond weddings, I love studio portraiture, and most of the time in the studio, I am using the 56 again. Uh, the 35, the 35 I used to use, that's not here now. So some of you will know that beautiful, classic, much loved lens, the 35, which I guess you could call the predecessor to this 33. Um, so I used to use the 35 in the studio a bit. Sometimes now I use the 33. Sometimes I use the zoom as well. I, I use the zoom especially, I mean, this goes to 2.8. If I'm not looking for anything um, faster than that, if I'm not looking for that really sort of narrow depth of field, uh, this is going to be fine. I often use ND filters and the occasional other filter, like a ProMist filter in the studio. And there usually I got them sized for the, for the zoom, just for that flexibility. Now, you'll probably know that I've got a, a book out uh, recently released and an exhibition on right now, mostly of street portraits. It's called A Little Book of Camden Passage. And I was looking, just before I made this video, I was looking through the data on Lightroom, and I can see that the most used lens for that project was that lovely old 35mm 1.4, which is, I think it was the 1.4, which I had back then. Of course, I've switched now to the 33, as you know, which is the lens that I would use now. I loved that lens. I really did love that lens. And I, you know, I felt it just was too into, I don't have tons of money, and I felt it was a little bit indulgent of me to have the 33 and the 35. And I switched because, it, you know, doing weddings, I really did need something with more reliable autofocus. And this, I don't have issues with, with autofocus. Now, the weatherproofing proofing as well is also uh, uh, very nice. But if it wasn't for weddings, I wouldn't have replaced it. So I use that lens, the old 35, for 25% of the photos. I'm, I'm talking about going through, it was, about, it was over, over five and a half thousand pictures over four years I took for that project. So a significant number, 
were on the 35 mil. Then it was the 23 millimeter, which was 22%, and then the 56 was 7%, and the rest of it shows up as either unknowns or uh, zooms, because when I first started shooting that project, I used to go out actually with the zoom kit lens that's on the X-T3 that's filming now, or the X-100V, which again is the 23 mil equivalent. I would I don't have that camera anymore, but I used to have that camera and I loved it. I loved taking it out. And it was good discipline for me to go out and just have that fixed focal length of 23 millimeters, uh, equivalent of, of 35. So now when I shoot street, I take with me a little bag with the 23 and the 33 in there. Now, if you're curious to see some more photos from that book, then do feel free, do feel compelled. To support my work, uh, you can head over to my website, garywilliams.photography, and click on Camden Passage. You'll find a link there to buy it. And yes, I do ship worldwide. Hurrah. So finally, I do still have the 16mm here, the Prime. I didn't get rid of it. This is a 24mm equivalent. I didn't get rid of this lens, even though I'm very good at selling things, because I do love it. And I did find it very interesting, but I found it very challenging. And I am planning uh, to start using this more and really getting used to this lens because I know it's a great lens and I love what people do with it. It's a 24 mil equivalent, I think. It's been gathering dust, but I am going to be uh, using that because there's some uh, photographers that I follow and I, I love their I love their work that they do with that lens. And then this beast, the 50 to 140 2.8, I think it's that would be like 80 to 200 mil. I only use that for photographing stage productions. I use that very rarely, but it's handy to have. And that's it. Uh, you can see that my channel is tiny and new, like a little puppy. So if you've got this far, do me a favor and click like and subscribe. I'm going to bring you a few more videos uh, soon, including a really exciting one all about camera backs. It doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> I'll see you next time.